Kenyan President William Ruto has officially announced a visa-free policy for people traveling to Kenya beginning January 2024. Speaking Tuesday to mark his country's 60th independence anniversary, Ruto said the policy will relieve travelers of the burden of manually applying for visas. Instead, he said those entering Kenya will be issued an electronic travel authority. Joseph Kiyoko is a Kenyan political analyst. He tells me President Ruto's announcement is long overdue because Africans with language connections do not need visa to travel from one country to another. Since he became president, he has talked about and is drawn from the European experience that today in Europe, the members of the Shenzhen country can move around each country's border without a visa. You can move from France to Germany without a visa. You can move from Germany to Austria without a visa. You can move. I mean, they have abolished the visa requirement. The president of Kenya today, Dr. William Ruto, is saying, as African, what is the problem of a Maasai moving from Kenya to his fellow Maasai in Tanzania? Why does he need a visa to move across? Why does a Karamajong, who is a native, or, or a Pokot, whose tribes exist within Uganda and Kenya, require a visa to move across. Then if you take it broadly, we as Africans, why do we need visas? And we are Bantus, or we are Nilos, or we are Kushites. We have a bigger clan together. Why do we need visas to move cross borders that were not there until the partitioning of Africa by the colonialists? It's a bigger debate that the president is putting on the table. If one looks at it from a visa requirement and say, oh, you know, uh, there's a security issue. Exactly. That's what I wanted to ask also, because there are some people who might be concerned about the security of the country if you just opened up the country. But as you see, then I think people are missing the point. Even before the country was opened, there was insecurity. The people who are coming in into the country on false pretense were coming in whether the visa requirement was there or not. So the question is not about whether visa is free or not. Like somebody would have said, we are addressing a right solution to the wrong problem. There is a problem, yes, but this solution is not to that problem. That there have been people, illegal immigrants coming into Kenya, yes. But the solution is not addressing the visa requirement issue or restricting the visa requirement issue because they have been coming into Kenya whether visa is free or for payment. But the bigger question that the president is addressing and the call for action is that as a country, how much do we gain by opening up our borders? How much do we as Kenyans, with the human capital that we have, with the human intelligence that we have, how much more do we as Africans and we as Kenyans, do we place ourselves in that position for net benefit moving forward? I think that's the question President Tutu is asking. So this was the 60th independence anniversary of Kenya. Uh, what did President Ruto have to say about the state of the nation, particularly the economy? I think he, in today's speech he's taken stock where we've come from as a country. I mean, from a unitary state, how we got independence and the power was centralized in Nairobi to a devolved uh, state of government today where we have, uh, of course, a centralized government with 47 devolved units, Uh, the existence of a bicameral parliament of uh, the National Assembly and Senate, the existence of uh, new principles of governance uh, as exposed through public participation, Uh, the independence of the judiciary. So there's a way in which the nation has grown. Today, we as a country, led by Dr. President Tutu, is saying that it is us who have inherited this government that must now continue forging a new, brighter future. Our fathers gave us the state. They gave us the state on a clean slate. Do what it is you want to do with it. Thank you so much. A pleasure to speak with you. 60th independent anniversary wishes to you and the people of Kenya. Thank you very much. And may God bless our country. May God allow us to prosper and flourish because we can only become great. 
Joseph Kiyoko is a Kenyan political analyst. He was speaking with us from the capital. Senegalese court heard arguments yesterday, Tuesday, whether opposition leader Usman Sonko should be put back on the list of candidates for the 2024 presidential polls. His name was removed earlier this year after he was convicted for having sex with a minor. Sonko has said that the charges against him were all politically motivated to keep him from running for president. Nafisa Dia is a member of Sonko's pastel party. She tells me the court said it will deliver its ruling tomorrow Thursday. Usman Sonko's lawyers, they tried to defend the former decision of the judge from the Genshaw, if you remember, the one who asked the Minister of uh, Domestic Affairs to put him back in the list of people who are allowed to run for the presidential election or to vote because he has been delisted and the judge decided that it was not lawful. And the state brought that case to another court saying that no, he cannot be put back in the list. So that was the hearing of those people today. And what the Usman Sonko's lawyers said was that the way he was condemned in absentia, so it was not possible for them to notify him that he has been delisted from the list of people who are able to vote. But when you delist someone, you have to notify it to that person. But how can you notify that decision to someone whom you say that he has been condemned in absentia? So when he's in absentia, so you don't know where he is. So you cannot notify him. He's delisting. So they couldn't notify him. They couldn't notify him because notifying him would mean that he's no longer in absentia. So the ruling would have been broken and they would have to do all over again all they have manipulated. You know, that's as the snake who is biting his own tail. So, Nefisa, when do you think uh, there will be a ruling? They said the ruling will be given on Thursday, December 14th. What are your hopes? Well, as always, we hope that he will uh, follow the ruling of his colleague from Degen Shore, who did uh, wonderful work and who said that given the way things happened, this is not lawful, you have to put him back in the list because that was only that question. He is entitled to vote and to be voted for. So put him back in the list, give him his document, let him go get his sponsor and apply to be a candidate for the upcoming presidential election. That's what the judge from the Genshaw said, and that's what we hope that this judge from Dhaka will say also. Former Sierra Leonean President Ernest Bai Koroma has been placed under house supervision in what the opposition say is house arrest following the recent violence. Koroma was questioned on Monday for the third time by police in Freetown about the events of November 26th described by the authorities as an attempted coup d'etat. On Saturday, the government had announced that Mr. Kuroma, who led Sierra Leone from 2008 to 2018, had been placed under a regime akin to house arrest, information disputed by one of his lawyers. Sierra Leone's Minister of Information had said that the former president had been released on condition that he remains within the confines of his property and that he receives a limited number of guests. On Monday, a large number of police officers were deployed around his residence. According to the Sierra Leonean authorities, some of Mr. Koroma's former guards are suspected of having taken part in the unrest of November 26th. In the early hours of that day, men attacked a military armory, two barracks, two prisons, and two police stations. The fighting left 21 people dead, 18 members of the security services, and three asylums, according to the Minister of Information.